Thank you, and good afternoon. Um, as Prost said, I'm talking about safety and security on, on the internet. Um, most people think of safety and security in terms of physical aspects, like physical walls, burglar guard, and so on. Um, however, there is also, um, it also applies to your information sphere or virtual world, um, or information world, however you want to call it. Um, the thing, though, is that both your physical security and your information security tend to overlap. It's known as uh, security convergence. Now, this means that something in the physical world can have an impact in the information world, and something in the information world can have an impact on something in the physical world. Now, an example of this is the Library of Alexandria. When it was burned down, physical property was destroyed. But along with that physical property was all the information that was contained in that library. Now, looking at these graphs, these are information security incidents that have been reported across the world in four different countries and different continents. And there is one major trend there. They're all increasing. But it's not just increasing, they're accelerating. Now, because they're accelerating, this means that as we go along, the chance of any one person having to deal with an information security incident is increasing. Now, also internationally, major information security incidents are increasing. So this doesn't mean that only individuals are at risk. Massive corporations, governments, even entire nations could be at risk from information security incidents. Now, we've spoken today about the wonderful communication tools that the internet provides. Now, this can actually be used for negative purposes. Um, in some instances, there have been demonstrations and riots organized by all your social networking facilities and the internet to put pressure on governments and basically organize demonstrations, riots, and so on. This does not necessarily mean a bad thing. But it can also be used to spy on people and on governments. A recent incident, uh, a number of visa applications were compromised through a, a, a cyber espionage ring. So all your information that you do on the internet, your internet banking and so on, can be spied on. But two incidents stand out. That of Estonia in 2007 and Georgia in 2008. Both countries were attacked by a massive denial of service attack. Now, Estonia in 2007, their major bank lost about a million dollars. In Georgia, all communications were hindered, internally and externally. And this was on the eve of the Russian incursion into South Ossetia. So in this case, that cyber attack affected a military physical operation. And in both cases, government websites, financial websites, media websites, all became inaccessible. Now, one of the interesting things is Estonia is one of the most connected countries in the world, and this is what made them vulnerable, is that they became reliant on the internet and the electronic communication. And when this was taken down, they struggled and they suffered. So when you become reliant on a system, the more you're going to suffer when that those services are taken away from you. And therefore, you, you need some form of manual backup to, to provide continuity of operation. So when something goes wrong, you can still function at a basic level. A second aspect of information security is awareness. Um, this image is a screenshot of an email I got a couple months ago. It's basically, apparently, from a bank saying that, oh no, my internet banking access has been reset, um, I must follow this link to go and reset the access. When you follow the link, you go to this web page. It looks pretty authentic. It looks the exact clone of the original banking site. It even has a disclaimer against phishing attacks. And this is a phishing attack. And there's one small error that they made, is that your internet address is in Russia. And if you look at it carefully, it's definitely not the legitimate banking site. Now, these attacks prey on people who not lack awareness. As if they did not know how to check that web address or what to look for, they would have fallen victim to the scam. And the fact that these scams are so prevalent 
means that sufficient people are falling victim to them for, to make this, all this effort worthwhile. So again, lack of awareness creates vulnerability. So it can affect someone's personal life, but it can also affect professional life. People work in businesses, and they can make mistakes. And this is how major corporations can become compromised. So it is essential for people to receive awareness training, both for their personal safety and for their professional safety. Now, how does this affect Africa? Now, the, the graphic shows the sort of predicted cables, um, undersea cables, bringing in bandwidth into Africa until the end of 2012. Now, this is going to result in a massive increase in the internet capacity in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, previously, as I said, reliance um, is a vulnerability. This is going to create more users. It's going to create a larger reliance in Africa on the internet. Therefore, we're going to be more vulnerable. <coughs> now, also with this increase of bandwidth, we're going to get an increase in the number of users. The internet is going to be more widely available. So therefore, there's going to be more potential victims. And in particular, the people in the rural communities who are now receiving computers, who are just getting used to computers, they go, they learn how to do internet banking, they're going to fall victim to these scams. These scams are going to become even more effective. So all these RCT development projects, they're good, but they're not sufficient. They're teaching people how to use computers. It'll be better to teach people how to use computers responsibly and safely. We need to make sure that people are aware so when they're exposed to all this new internet technology, they can do so safely. Thank you.